Welcome to Markets in Two Minutes for June. This is Emily Platt from the Wellspire Investment Team. On June 16th, the Federal Reserve raised rates by 75 basis points, citing elevated inflation levels as the primary reason for doing so. Equity markets reacted negatively to the news as higher interest rates tend to lead to compressed multiples. And as long as that dynamic continues, we expect volatility to continue in the stock market for the coming months. With all that's going on with inflation and how it's impacting markets, we wanted to illustrate the impact that inflation has historically had on equity markets. This chart here looks to different inflationary environments, which you can see on the x-axis. The blue bars show you what happens when inflation is decelerating or unchanged, and the orange when inflation is accelerating. The key takeaway here is that it isn't necessarily the level of inflation that's a primary influence, but rather whether inflation is high and rising or low and rising. That's when stocks do poorly, meaning when inflation goes from 5 to 6% or 6 to 7%, which really is what we've been seeing now. History has shown, though, that stocks can still generate positive returns during periods of elevated inflation as long as inflation isn't moving higher. The other thing that's going on here is that equity markets are also beginning to grow concerned that the Fed runs the risk of moving too quickly and making a mistake leading to a recession. With mortgage rates at 6.5% and some signals within the underlying inflation data that prices of goods are beginning to roll over, there are some reasons to suspect that inflation data may begin to peak soon and that the Fed may begin to hike rates into a slowing economy. On the other hand, when we take a step back and look at things at a portfolio level, we would have to go back to 1981 to find the last time we saw stocks and bonds down simultaneously, which I know Connor touched on in the last markets in two minutes. During that time, bond prices bottomed well before stocks recovered. If that is the case today, the pain from bonds should mostly be priced in and entering the bottom. The investment team will continue to closely monitor the markets and are in constant communication with advisors to have a complete understanding of ramifications to client portfolios and make the necessary changes. With that, we thank you for listening to this month's Markets in Two Minutes.